<laughs> and I'm, I don't know, why can't that be good enough? Like, why do they have to rip off Star Wars? I... I wish I had an answer. <laughs> That's what it comes down to, it's just like... I, I honestly don't know, I just... What the hell were they thinking when they made that show? Wait... It's like, to me, the big question for it... And, like, this is a question I ask about a lot of adaptations. Especially adaptations I can't really justify. Either because they don't do anything different, or they don't do anything... ...that... ...from the thing they're adapting. And it's like, I... I know the argument of a lot of people is just like, why can't you just let people be different? It's just like, could they at least have made it... Halo in any way beyond its visuals. Okay, here's the thing, in my opinion, when it comes to adapting something, including games, about what's wrong with doing something different. Well, you know that saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Like, there's a yeah. reason why certain titles were popular in the first place. You know, there's certain aspects of it that are well appreciated. And if, and if you don't take that into consideration and just think, oh yeah, let's try a whole different thing about it, you're kind of being disingenuous to those who really like it in the first place. Mm. Yeah. It's also, like, like... Go ahead, Logic. Like, there, there, like, there is a thing there. I'm like, I don't want to make it, like, I don't want to be the kind of person who says, oh, they should just do, like, the show should have just been Halos 1 through 3. Absolutely not. We, like, we already have a Halos 1 through 3. It's called Halos 1 through 3. <laughs> so, like, but, you know... Like, the problem with the Halo adaptation compared to the Fallout adaptation, apart from the contempt, the disrespect, the very clear disdain the Halo show's writers have for Halo and anyone who likes it, is that... And honestly, Fallout's the perfect point of comparison, because Fallout's story is constructed in such a way that this is the only thing the show could have been, and this plays into how good it is. So, let me ask you a genuine question. Okay. Why did the Halo show have to be about Master Chief? I... I... For one guess... And this is just me taking a gander. So, in the games... How often do they talk about Master Chief? Outside of the books? And how uh, often do well, people play look as... at the books? Go ahead. Like, you play... Like there's a whole back and forth discourse on the whole thing, okay. but in all of the in all of the Halo games, apart from Reach and half of Halo Five, you're playing as Master Chief. But like, the thing I want to get to there, and like the point I'm trying to make with that uh -huh. is like I had a follow up question about why is Master Chief in, like why is the Halo show about Master Chief? And the follow up question is how many. Like, how many Fallout stories have there been that have involved a repeat main protagonist? I mean, I will say I don't have much knowledge on Fallout, so I don't have a clear answer on that okay. one. The answer is none. The answer is none. Okay. <laughs> every, like, every Fallout game has had a different protagonist. Okay, so... Every single one. And, like, the, like, the reason, like... I know that only half kind of makes sense for the discussion. Uh-huh. But... The Fallout show right. does something that the Halo show doesn't in this context, and that is the Halo show had to be about Master Chief could be so iconic, but then the Halo show made a character who just isn't the Master Chief. In stark contrast, the Fallout show is about a vault dweller named Lucy and a couple of other guys that you kind of have to get into the show to, like, figure out who they are. I'm not going to spoil anything. Right. But, like, the, like, the thing is... Like, yeah, you don't get repeat protagonists in Fallout anyway, but the point is, the Fallout show could have been about Nate from Fallout 4. It could have been about the Lone Wanderer from Fallout 3, the Courier from New Vegas. New... It could have been about any of the Fallout protagonists. It could have been about the guy from Fallout 76, whichever one is canon, I guess. But they didn't do that. Because, you know... Nate, the Lone Wanderer, all those guys, their stories have already been told. We've already played as them. Hell yeah. Another and we've also already played as Master Chief four and a half times. 
So Fallout gives us a new protagonist that can be whatever the writers want them to be, and they do it really well. They have much the more Halo creative. show. Go ahead. Like, meanwhile, the Halo show is about a character a lot of people love, except the writers of the show. So they make their Master Chief, their alleged improved, more human Master Chief. <laughs> and I kind of look at it and go, How is it improved? Yeah, no, this. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, no, I know what Master Chief looks like. I just spent 4.5 games getting to know this guy. Six, like, 5.5 6, if you count infinite. You know what? I'm going to count infinite. 5.5. But, um,. The, like, the whole thing there is that, much like I already know who Nate from Fallout 4 is, I already know who Master Chief from Halo is. And now somebody making the Halo show has decided, yeah, no, I'm gonna make Master Chief an angry meathead every man. Because he's a guy and also a soldier and also a super soldier, so he's only allowed to be this kind of thing. Whereas in the games, especially in Halo Infinite, which I will give it that, if nothing else, Halo Infinite does interesting things with Chief's characterization. It's like, yeah, he doesn't show a lot of emotion because he grew up effectively in a compound, in a compound molding him to be a weapon. But people around him still kind of forced him to be human anyway. Mm -hmm. So he's the closest approximation of a human he can really be. And particularly in scenes with the pilot in Halo Infinite, he does it quite well. He empathizes with people. He actually cares about his mission, cares about what he's fighting for. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, in the Halo show, all I get is angry, angry, reverse indoctrination, <laughs> angry, bullshit, mad, uh, halsey, rah, 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 fucking dies at some point or whatever, and also rapes a prisoner of war. Oh, yikes. Yeah, no, that. Like, unironically, based on the context, that's the thing that happens. Like, there's this random human woman who's part of the Covenant, which isn't a thing that happens at any point in the Halo franchise. Like, the actual Covenant before they're destroyed at the end of Halo 3, effectively, despise humanity. Mm -hmm. In fact, their religious doctrine mandates that they eradicate humanity and i'm supposed to believe that some random woman is a part of the covenant the human genociding covenant yeah, yeah nah. and she exists and and that i feel that this is quite shallow because i can say quite confidently she exists just to get banged by chief yeah because there is no other way you can justify her existence there isn't a single scene you can put her in that you can't replace her with the Arbiter, or the Prophets, or some other weird Covenant alien thing that isn't a human. But none of those are bangable, so you can't make a scene of Chief having sex with her. Like, the whatever she's called, the Blessed, the Exalted, or whatever dumbass name they gave her, Something only like exists yeah. to get banged by Chief. And that's incredibly shallow. And it's just another piece of why sh friggin' what is what do people call him? Jimmy Rings. Like it's another reason why Jimmy Rings is a garbage interpretation of an actually pretty cool character. If like, oh yeah, David. <laughs> I hear 80s, a lot of. Sorry for the interruption, David. Eighties. Yeah, it is absolutely garbage of a show. Like, I, it's one of the shows that I don't ever recommend. Period. It's like. I used to give film ratings, I give that one like half a star. It was so boring, it just... It's like... Go ahead. There are, there are things I can give it, though. Cause like, I've just realized I've been, like, I've only been talking shit about it, but like, I wanna... I wanna give myself some amount of critical credibility by being able to admit that there are things about the Halo show I do like. The way they make the weapons from the Halo games look is really cool. I don't understand why there's whatever that very modern day car is rolling around in 2250 or whatever year Halo takes place in. But like, you know, the Needler looks really good. The Spartan armors look really, really good. Some of the Covenant things, like I remember people praising how the Jackals and Skirmishes looked. Like, you know. There are things the show does right, but they're all visual. They're all aesthetic. Like, the best way to describe the Halo show is that 
it looks like Halo. It doesn't feel like Halo or make any attempts to be Halo beyond looking the part. And it, in the nicest possible way, you could have told me the Halo show was actually a Mass Effect show and I'd believe you 100% because the beginning of the Halo show where Chief finds this artifact that reverses all of his inhibitor chip Spartan indoctrination bullshit cancer uh -huh. is point for point the sequence from Mass Effect 1 where Shepard finds the artifact that warns him about the Reapers and Saren. Why do I have a feeling that the... Well, like... Not even why do I have a feeling. It that's just like that is a bizarre comparison because it is true and it just seems like you know, if they wanted to adapt some kind of popular science fiction IP, they could have just gone straight for adapting Mass Effect and kind of write its well, own show there. Like I've talked to Aeon a few times about this and the prevailing wisdom between us is well the last time I had the conversation, I think that's what was said. I'll have to ask him about it. But to my understanding, they wanted to, like, maybe they wanted to make a Mass Effect show, but they were told they had to do Halo and decided to be really spiteful about it. You know, this sounds like, like a wonderful headcanon. <laughs> and, like, the reason I have this headcanon is because, and I do want to preface it is a headcanon, it's hypothetical, I'm not saying this is definitely what we Yeah, we don't want to like, but we like, don't want people to get in the impression you know, that that's what we're saying. Yeah, so don't go and, don't go and like, send death threats to like, Mass Effect Absolutely devs, so not, yeah, race. no. That is... Like, don't do that. Yeah, that's one of that's the crit. things, yeah, no, that's one of the things that I can't stand, like, period. Because I've already, like, witnessed a couple of events regarding death threats with MLP. Yeah. Like, what happened with Amy King Rogers on Philly Vanilli. Like, I did not like how Pinky was written in that episode, but that's no excuse to go sending death threats over that. Or yeah. the, uh... And, like, you know, the ending of the show entirely. You know, some people got mad that they were giving death threats to DHX. Like, that's that's not okay. That's, that's not gonna help. Yeah, it's not, like... Go not only is it morally wrong, it's all so fucking pathetic, because, like, you know... It's a show! You're a friend, like, it's like your friendship is magic fan. What the fuck are you actually going to do to these people if they don't give you what you want? Exactly. It's, like, the show is, like, the show is still over. It still ended after that episode, and I haven't heard of, like, I haven't seen any headlines of any, like, VHX or whatever people, like, you know, showing up mysteriously dead under weird circumstances in Minecraft. Yeah, like... But it's like, you know, it's just like... I don't know. Like, on one hand, it is morally fucked, and you're a scummer if you do it, but on the other hand, it's also really pathetic, because you're not going to fucking do it. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's... <laughs> like, there, there's only one possible exception of having a change on something, and you can take this with a grain of salt, and there are re Like, I can think of multitude of reasons behind all of it, but with MLP, the show is done. It ran its course. It doesn't need anything else. And the, even though there are some flaws into it, like, the whole show is littered with flaws. There's no need to go back and what do it. What show isn't, honestly? Yeah, exactly. And with the change, like, I know that somebody would bring this up, like, uh, the change with the Sonic the Hedgehog character in the movie, which I'm glad they did because legitimately it's a like it's almost nightmare fuel and I don't think kids would want to watch it. That's why well, I think that it I was appropriate. The, I Good. I love the theory that Ugly Sonic was a psyop. I don't <laughs> believe that it was a publicity stunt. I think that's bullshit. No, I, I I don't agree with it because I feel like modern day corporations aren't clever enough <laughs> to do something like that. But, like, it would be really funny if Ugly Sonic was a psyop that someone set up to be like, yeah, we're gonna freak everybody out with this totally tone-deaf nightmare creature. And they'll be like, okay, we'll fix it, you win. And, you know, we'll let the fans have their little we bullied a corporation in compliant moment, and then we'll give them the real design. That is, like, it may not be true, but it's really, really funny. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. You know, the way you worded it, that is, like, funny as shit. I just like, think that the design of Sonic the Hedgehog to make a live-action movie was out of, like, like total negligence or ignorance without the realization, oh, yeah. yeah, there's a reason why Sonic is designed the way he was. And, um, and honestly, I think that 
I think that's a good attitude to take into any adaptation of anything. Yeah. And it's those specific words. This is probably this way for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> think about it a bit more before you start dissecting. And that's, like, honestly, like, between the Halo, like, between the Halo show's obvious disdain for its source material, it's, un like, like, between that and its unwillingness to tell a story about someone who isn't the Master Chief, and just so, like, you know, just all of that bullshit, like, the big blanket term reason for why Fallout works and Halo doesn't is because Fallout isn't afraid of itself, or embarrassed by itself, and Fallout, the Fallout show understands what it is. The Halo show is having an identity crisis. <laughs> it not doesn't know what it wants to be. No, it's not even an identity crisis. I think a better way to describe it is... It, it's a fan fiction. It's a very stupid fan fiction. They pulled a Resident Evil on that. I... Go ahead. I mean, I guess. In fact, you know, I think I can, I think I can think of a better analogy. Give me a moment. Oh, so, okay. oh shit. <laughs> right. Golden, when you said fanfic, like a very bad fanfic, my brain's just going all out of these really stupid fanfics that I read, and I'm like, oh god, no, not this. Yeah, I've got it, I've got it. In its simplest form, whatever way you slice it, whether this is true or not, this is how it is interpreted by all of the people who watch it. The Fallout show is a creation of love. The Halo show is a creation of spite. Yep, the night and day, uh, the night and day formula. Yep, that analogy hit. No, nope, that 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 puts the nail on the coffin there. Yeah, and I like you know, again, like if any, like if anyone who is somehow I cannot stress this point enough, somehow a Halo show fan is like you know that's cool, that's fine. There is a reason that Fallout's having a renaissance right now, and Halo isn't. Because, because it was earned. Yeah. In fact, like, I remember when I was talking about this with somebody else, I've started calling it the Edge Runners effect. Uh huh. And you guys know about Cyberpunk 2077, right? No. Well, Cyberpunk 2077 was another horror story of game development. I remember like, hearing about that, yeah. It wasn't as bad as Fallout 76, because at least. Cyberpunk 2077 didn't falsely advertise products and then dox people for complaining. Yes, that actually happened for anyone oh, who isn't it. That is not good. Yeah, no, people requested that, like, the products they had purchased were actually made of what they were advertised to be made of, and Bethesda was like, okay, fair enough. Like, put your deets. Put your deets in this thing, and we'll get them to us, you, you when they're actually ready. Only problem was the link Bethesda gave people to effectively send in their complaints and requests for what they fucking paid for either ha like, had really, really bad security, and if someone wanted to, which they did, that person could kind of just pluck all of the deets from the people who sent in the requests. There was not an insignificant number of requests. Yep. So yeah, a lot of, like, people got doxxed for asking for what they paid. So, yeah, Cyberpunk yeah, 2077 would have a very hard time topping that bullshit. But Cyberpunk 2077 was released in an unfinished state, woefully unstable, and Oof. a bunch of the stuff that was talked about was very clearly overhyped and hyperbolized. Like, it, it wasn't as, like, what wasn't broken wasn't as good as it was made out to be. And, like, you know, we've all heard the stories of things like No Man's Sky, it's like, you know, fucking promising people the universe, and then you offer them the same six planets with different color palettes and the same three dinosaurs with different stances. But much like No Man's Sky, Cyberpunk 2077 managed to claw its way out of that limbo, that abyss. And it did it in a way that 
made it bigger than No Man's Sky because it also involved the creation of an anime for Cyberpunk 2077, which anyone who knows what I'm talking about knows as Cyberpunk Edge Runners, which is phenomenal. And Cyberpunk Edge Runners revived Cyberpunk 2077 and laid the groundwork for CD Projekt Red mm. just outdoing themselves and pulling what can best be described as the greatest opinion you like public opinion u-turn in gaming since no man's sky 